Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. I hope you're having a great day today. Um, back here, this used to be some uh, Kentucky Bluegrass GCI Blue Heat. As you can see, it's dead as a hammer. Uh, this section right here, I'm going to convert over to my garden. And this section right here needs to be grass. You can see my line right here is where my little fence is gonna go to enclose my garden. Now, some of you may already know how to do this, and some of you may not. Maybe you're new and don't, uh, or just unsure how to do it. This is a just another way you can do a renovation. I've showed you bare dirt renovation, kill off, that kind of thing. And, and before we go any further, I wanna make it clear, uh, there's a lot of folks on YouTube talking grass stuff, and a lot of people use different language to explain different things. When you're watching my videos, I want you to know that a, when, when you hear me say renovation, my definition of renovation is you smoke it off, meaning kill what's there with glyphosate, and you replace it with a new yard. Now that may be meaning regrading, it may bring in dirt. It's all kind of things that that could actually mean, but in the, the general scheme of things, the word renovation means kill and start over. That's my definition. So when you hear me say that, you know what I'm talking about. Why did I renovate this? Well, because I wanted to put my garden here. This need to be grass. I moved some blue grass up there and we're gonna plant some fescue right here. And I just wanted to be able to show you the process. Now what's different about this renovation is I'm doing zero grade work, none whatsoever. This spot of ground right here is nice and flat because I renovated it a couple of years ago and put the blue heat in it. We watched it for a while, blah, blah, blah. You know the story. So I don't necessarily need to grade anything here. Okay, so I killed the turf off a while back. This was two months ago when I did this, and I let the turf deteriorate on its own. I did come out here and cut it down really, really low to the ground after it turned brown, and now you see what I've, I'm left with. I've got like a mat of dead turf. Am I going to remove that? No, I'm not. I'm going to take a core aerator. I'll show you what a plug, you know, some, some people call it a plugger. Uh, I'll show you what that is in a minute. We're going to plug the ever-living snot out of this area, really tear it up good. Then we're going to apply the grass seed with a typical spreader. Then we're going to take a slit seeder or slice seeder, some people call it that. And then we're going to groove it all in and start watering. And we'll have grass up in less than 10 days. And the only reason I say that is this is a brand spanking new single variety mono stand of fescue that I have no clue how quick it germinates. So. That's why I say within 10 days, my fescue, my GCI turf type tall fescue, uh, I've gotten reports of germination in three days. I've got four days. Typically, I'm around the five day mark uh, on average. Uh, and on that, never judge a grass seed by how fast it germinates, okay? We judge a grass seed on how it lives its life. Who, who cares if it takes three days for it to germinate or if it takes nine days? That's irrelevant. I could care less. As long as the turf performs throughout the entire year, that's what I'm concerned about. Now, this is my Stinger. Uh, it's a stand-on type core aerator, plugger. Uh, that's really the only two things I've heard it calls an aerator or a plugger. And you can see here's the platform that you stand on. And up under the belly of the machine here are the core tines. And you can see this is how the machine operates. Now, don't feel like you have to get your hands on one of these because you don't have to. They make smaller walk behind units that you can rent at different hardware stores, Home Depot, that kind of thing. But you can see this is what it does. It removes a core of the earth from the earth. And you can see right there's a little plug and it just spits them out, leaves a lot of little plugs laying all over the place. You go over your yard, if your yard's in you know rough shape, go over it multiple times. If the yard's in good shape, you know, single pass aeration is pretty good. Let's see if I can get that one out. That's a good one right there. I don't know if I can get that one out or not. Come on, baby. Yep, you don't want to come out. But either way, these things spin like that, whether it be a walk behind or a stand on model. And in bare ground situation where we're at we're we're dealing with bare ground meaning there's nothing covering it other than some dead material 
I want to go over the yard multiple, multiple times, exposing as much earth as I possibly can. Alright, you can see it roughed it up pretty good. You can see it's broken up really nice. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a slit seeder and use that for two purposes. One, to groove the seed in the ground. Number two, to kind of level out some of this and then bust up some of these clods and all that kind of thing. Alright, so for me, hands down, the best uh, slit seeder I've ever used. Nope. They don't tell me to say that. They don't pay me to say that. I say that because it is hands down the best one I've ever used. And I've had a bunch of them. Uh, seed box right here. Set your depth right here with this handle. Uh, here's where you adjust your seed flow to let tell the thing how much seed to come out. Uh, this right here is, I forgot what that one does. Uh, seed flow, that one opens the grass seed. And this one turns the PTO on to engage the uh, wheels, tines. And when we get up under here, you can see how this works. See all these, these discs right here? And they're slotted and they just go through and, and cut down in the ground and create a bunch of little grooves. It comes in real handy for mixing the seed into the ground as well. So I know some of you are going to think I'm crazy when I tell you this, but I don't use the uh, slit seeder in a traditional way. I don't put the seed in the hopper and apply the seed with this machine. I spread the seed evenly over the area. Then I use this as a tool to groove it in or to mix it up. Why do I do that? Pretty simple. Uh, no matter how good I feel like I am, I feel like I may have a gap in coverage and I just don't want that. I feel like I'm much better off to spread the seed and then use the slice seeder to groove it all in. It's absolutely no different because the machine drops the seed straight down first, then the tines groove it in, chop it up, mix it up. So it's no different if I throw the seed down first with a traditional spreader, then go over it with this. For me, that just limits the chance of error. That's all it is to it. Uh, yeah, I'm causing myself three extra minutes of work by spreading the grass seed first with a spreader but i don't care i'm good with it now as far as depth goes i'll stay around the quarter inch mark that's a, roughly about how deep i want to go if it's a little bit uneven it may get a little bit deeper here and there not at all worried about that as long as i'm close to a quarter an inch so what we're working with here is a 21 by 24 area that's 504 square feet, okay? We're seeding at eight pounds per 1,000 with this particular mono stand of tall fescue. So that means I need four pounds of grass seed. Tell you what, this just come to mind. Another reason I do it that way is I don't really have the time to go through uh, the process of calibrating this thing to make sure I'm putting in the right amount of grass seed per 1,000, you know, with my speed and width and all that kind of thing. It's just way less complicated for me if I just spread my grass seed and then use this to groove it in. Now, what spreader setting do I use? That's super easy. So I'm going to start it down real low, down around a 13 or so. And even if I have to make a couple of passes over the yard, that's fine as long as I get this four pounds of seed spread evenly over this 500 square feet. Typically, I would use a drop spreader on my edges, but I left it at the shop, so I'm just going to drop it out by hand. Now, if you notice, I changed up my pattern a little bit, okay? I went this way first, and I still had some more seed left over, so now I'm going the other way. All right, so now I'm going to get my setting uh, on the depth on the sl uh, slit seeder. And we're going to groove it in. I'm going to groove it one way. Then I'm going to rotate and do opposite of that. Kind of, kind of crisscross it like that. And that way I'm sure to catch pretty much every spot out here.
so you can see it kind of smooths it back out a little bit bust up some of them clods and that kind of thing and once i start watering it'll kind of settle out anyway if you wanted to roll it use a culture packer roll or something like that right now would be the time to do it that way you can firm it back up a little bit and then obviously i'm going to go ahead and do my starter fertilizer um, i'm going to use green pop over here with rgs humic 12 and tenacity so i'm going uh, to go ahead and mix up enough to go ahead and do this spot as well and then once all that's done it's all over but the grind all you gotta do is keep it watered keep the seed moist and uh won't be long you have a yard so i appreciate you taking time out of your day thank you for watching like subscribe share tell all your buddies and don't forget to come on back and check all these out we'll do full updates through the fall and show you results and all that kind of thing so again appreciate you watching check you later